Dividends are an awesome way to get a passive income while investing. This dividend tracker analyzes your investment portfolio and dividend transactions to show a breakdown of your dividend income per month and year. By using smart formulas, you can choose the year to show the dividend income results. You can see how the versatile charts are automatically linked to the customized data. There's even a chart where you can see the top performers and their dividend income for that particular period chosen. Dividends count as income, so tax should always be taken into consideration. There's a cell where you can enter your tax rate to understand what amount goes towards tax and what is the net income. If we scroll down, there's a dividend forecast section where the formulas analyze historical data to project future dividend income. This feature is incredibly helpful as it will help you organize your budget and set future financial goals. The dashboard and portfolio tabs are fully automated. They both read the information from the enter data tab. All you need to do is enter your portfolio data and your income transactions. I tried to automate this tracker as much as possible, but getting information like the dividend yield and ex-dividend date automatically doesn't really work for all stocks and ETFs around the world. I like to release products available for everyone, so at the moment there's no generic formula that will automate this. I might release trackers in the future containing formulas for specific countries. As you can see, if you enter any ticket that is not US based, the dividend yield and X dividend date cells will show an enter manually message. All you have to do is search specific information for your investment to find its dividend yield. The X dividend date is just an optional piece of information for those meticulous investors. Assuming we get a cash dividend from BMW stock listed in Germany, all we do is enter the date, the ticker, the type of dividend. In this case, we get a cash dividend that is added to our account balance. So we write one and then quantity. If it's from a dividend reinvestment plan, all you have to do is write the amount of shares we purchased with a dividend received. As you can see, BMW has been added to the portfolio list and to the October figures. Talking about figures, if you haven't figured it out yet, there is one tiny mistake in this example. Google Finance is showing us the current price of BMW in euros as it's listed in Germany. So our portfolio statistics are technically incorrect. It is best to use this tracker with single currency purchases. However, if you trade in multiple currencies and you want to see the correct numbers, all you have to do is change the dividend received to the overall currency. In this case, US dollars for this specific date. Then, simply link the average purchase price to your investment portfolio tracker by using the import range formula. In this case, I link it to the currency converter tab where BMW's price is in US dollars. You could even do this with all your portfolio data to automatically update your purchase price that is computed automatically in the investment portfolio tracker. Make sure to check out the investment portfolio tracker linked in the description of this video. And that is pretty much it. You now have a complete dividend tracker that helps you understand your dividend income and investment performance. If you would like to access this ready to use tracker in light, dark and cyberpunk theme, make sure to visit my Patreon, which is also linked in the description of this video. Now let's learn how to build this from the beginning. Okay, so first thing we go to Google and search Google Sheets and we click Google Sheets. Go to Google Sheets and what I'm gonna do is start a blank new spreadsheet. Let's start off with the enter info tab. So we're gonna set up the tables for where we enter the information. Next is the dividend transactions. And then finally the yearly breakdown. So what I'm going to do is enter some dummy transactions so we can see how the formulas work as we enter them. So we enter the dummy transactions and now we're going to work on the formulas. All these formulas are going to be available in the description of this video. So all you have to do is simply copy and paste them in the cells where I'm entering them. The X dividend date and the dividend yield are grabbing information from Finviz and from Yahoo Finance. So if it can't find the information for the stock, for the ticker, then it's going to say enter manually. And then this formula is just capturing the shares that are in DRIP or dividend reinvestment plan. And it's going to just going to tell us how many shares we're accumulating just for extra information. All we're doing is multiplying the quantity times the dividend amount. If we just leave the date as it is, when we have a drop down of date, it's going to show us all the dates, you know, 13th of August, the 2nd of September, 4th of September. And what we want is to have only the month in the drop down. These values, they have to be in plain text because if we have them in date, it's not going to match these here. 
because this is in text as well. So we need to make sure it's consistent. But initially, what we're going to do is write down a date so it's easier to drag down. We got February 2020. I'm going to select these two and then drag them down. I'm going to leave it only until January 2024 and delete the rest. And all we do now is select them all and click plain text. This formula is doing the exact same thing that this formula is doing. It's just grabbing the year from our cell. All right, and we're almost done with the transactions. The only thing that we need to add is the action. So we're going to select everything all the way to the bottom, go to data, data validation, list of items, and we're going to write drip or DRP and dividend. So now when you click the cell, you can choose between drip or dividend. And that is it for this tab, the enter info tab. All I'm going to do now is quickly format this so that it looks similar to the demo. What we're doing is essentially adding borders to the tables and a few colors. Okay, so the transactions are formatted now. The only conditional formatting that I did for the transactions was to add a color if the cell is not empty. So all you do is select the cells from the transactions and format them to not empty and then you choose the color that you want. Okay, so the next item is the dividend portfolio. What I'm going to do is add the titles of all the columns and then you can pause the video and copy them. Okay, so I've copied all the titles from the demo into here. So now you can just pause the video and just copy these titles and we're going to start working on the formulas. So the first piece of information that we want is the ticker. So then we can grab all the data after that. So we're going to enter the following formula. Unique. I'm going to enter info. Select from A3 all the way to the bottom and remove. And then just click enter. And we get the list of the unique values from our portfolio. Next is the name. So all we're doing here is using Google Finance to find the name of the company based on the ticker. Next is the shares. So we're just simply doing a VLOOKUP with the ticker. Just trying to find the number of shares that we previously entered. And we're going to use Google Finance to find the current price or the latest market price of the ticker. For the yield on cost, all we have to do is divide annual dividend with the average purchase price. And we can compare it with the current dividend yield just to understand the dividend performance or movement since we bought it. The next two cells serve as a screener in case you want to find specific information in the portfolio tab. So what we're doing is scanning the transactions that we've got and specifically showing the numbers for this month that we enter here. So what we're going to do is click this cell, go to data, data validation. We're going to enter a range of formula. We're going to go back to data and we're going to select column N from N3 all the way to N. So the whole column. Click OK, save. And then when we go back to portfolio, we're going to change this to plain text. So now when you choose any month, it shows us the dividend income for that specific month. And we do the same, but in this case for the year 2021. So similar to the enter data tab, I'm going to quickly format this by adding conditional formatting and just a few borders and colors to the titles. And there it is. For the conditional formatting, all I did for columns H and I was add rule. So if it's less than zero, we make it red. And if it's more than zero, we make it green. And there it is. The dividend portfolio is ready. So now we're going to work on the dashboard. So we're going to start with the summary table where we choose the year and it shows us all the months data validation list from range and we want to go to enter data and select this column column r so i'm going to drag to the bottom and then remove the number so we got the whole column click ok save so if we go back to dashboard now we get a list of all the years available i'm going to choose 2021 and i'm going to change it again to plain text so we're going to enter a query formula. What we're doing is selecting the data that we have entered and it's selecting 
Q, where R contains this figure. So what it means by Q and R, it's, it, it's selecting the column Q, where column R contains 2021. So if we click enter, it gives us a list of all the months. And if we go to enter data, you can see that column Q and R contain the months and the year. So it's a, in a way, it's like a, it's like an advanced VLOOKUP formula. So now we can get the dividend income for this specific month. So what it does is it looks up this value in the enter data transactions to see if we have any income. We're going to drag it down and we're going to change it to accounting because I like to see the dash, not the zeros, but that's up to you. We have a few charts to work on, but I'll leave that to the end. What we're going to do now is scroll down and work in the dividend analysis and the projections. So we're first going to get the month. So to do this, we also use a query formula. But in this case, we want to get all the months that we have in the data, not only the ones for 2021 or 2020. So that's why we select all. And that is the reason why we have all here so it's looking at the values that have an all next to it so if you want to add further years to it all you have to do is enter all and those that are missing and you can see that they're added here so i added an all for february so if i delete all for february then it, it won't show up here again we're going to make some calculations for dates so what we want to do is get the date format of all the months that we write because we initially changed them to plain text so that we could work around with the drop downs um, in this case i'm changing it back to dates so that the, the rest of the calculations can be done because we have text up here the first three rows are going to have different formulas because i'm grabbing 12 months of data but these i don't want them to grab the information here that's why i'm going to change the formulas so now from May onwards, we can drag down. Again, the formula is changed for the first four. Then we can drag from this one. So what we're doing in this formula is looking up the month after today's date. I'm currently in October 2021, so I get the month after October. And all we do is copy this formula and then paste it at the bottom again. But instead of negative zero, now I write one, change the format again to month, and now I get the month after. So I'm just going to change all these to date. And then again, if I copy this formula and paste it here, if I change this to two, then it gets January. So it's looking at the current month plus three months. I'm going to copy this formula again, and then I write number three. And then number four and so on. And we are done with the calculations. The rest of it is pretty much adding the charts and formatting all the tables. So one more thing we're going to do is actually select column B, right click and then hide it. So we're going to hide the column because we don't really need that date format. Uh, it's just an extra information for the calculations. So all we do is hide it. Before we start with the charts, I'm going to quickly format this whole dashboard. So I'm going to add a few borders and colors and I'll be right back. Okay, so we have added some colors and borders to the tables in the dashboard. So I added conditional formatting to this table. So if we go to format conditional formatting, we can see the custom formula that I wrote. So if B38 is less than today, then we color in this color. B38 is the date, so you can see that we're currently in October 2021. So up until October 21, this is formatted to this color. It's a good way to see your progress. Okay, so now let's start with the charts. Insert chart, and I'm going to start with a donut. I'm going to remove this. I'm going to go to dividend portfolio, and I'm going to choose the tickers. So from B2 to B, and the next range is just going to be the market value. Again, from G2 to G. 
we're going to select the area chart. And I'm going to select from C6 to D18. So I'm selecting the months and the dividend income. This one's going to be a column chart. And for the data range, I'm going to remove this. We're going to go to the dividend portfolio again. We're going to choose the ticker from B2 to B. And then the third item that we're going to look at is that annual dividend income, the one for 2021. So again, R2 to R. Beautiful. Okay, now we're going to work on the charts for the forecast section and we're going to select the combo chart now for the data range the first one that we want is c which is the month the next one that we want is f which is the average monthly one and then finally the third one that we want is the actual dividend income okay and there it is now we're gonna work on the 12 month dividend income projection chart. So we're gonna insert chart. We want a column chart. For the data range, we're gonna remove that. First one that we're gonna choose is this one here, the months. So I went from I39 to I50. And then the next one that I want is the 12 months. I'm going to call it to the moon. And we're going to select the range in dividend portfolio. First one that we want is the ticker. B2 to B. Next one is the yield on cost. N2 to N. And finally, the dividend yield, which is this one, J. J2 to J. We're going to click OK. I think this is a pretty cool chart. It makes you understand how dividends change through time. OK, and finally, we're going to work on the total dividend income projection. So it's going to be a column chart and the data range is going to be month again and then the dividend income. And we are good to go. There it is. We have successfully created the dividend tracker in light theme. We're going to quickly add the data that I showed in the demo. So it was BMW. Dividend yield was 2.2%. If we change this to November, this changes to November, so if we go to the dashboard, we can see how November now has $15. So this is the formula that I use to change the price from euros to US dollars. So it was previously 15, now it's 17.4 US dollars. And then in the portfolio tab, we want to change the current price because it's currently in euros, that's 85 euros. But we just change this formula to this formula. And we get the price, and there it is. All the charts are versatile. We got awesome query formulas so that we can play with the numbers and understand our performance from different years and months. And we've got dividend projections so that you can understand what you might earn in the future. Okay, thank you. This is Planet Finance. Thanks for joining me. Until next time, happy learning.